welcome to the QA Ops channel. I'm Rafael Lima, and in this video, we're going to keep learning a little bit more about uh, Researcher and Java API testing. If you have been keeping up with the videos, uh, don't have much to say, but if you are new, I'll be posting links for you to see all this series because we have been doing uh, from the creation of the project all the way to ser serialization, set it up, setting up a Researcher uh creating uh java domain classes and everything from scratch so i'll be posting uh the links here uh, at, uh right now in uh, at the end of the video so you can uh keep it up so let's start now so again i'm on uh, uh on my english master branch and this is our coding right so this is what we have been doing so far um one of the things that i would like to talk a little bit about is just about some syntax sugar that researcher has so i have a, a one person uh, asking me why i use param and in another in another test i used uh param so i don't i cannot find it here but you can use both param or param so you can here is param right and this is going to be one single parameter that you need to send to the url string so given uh param and then you have the username and you can also uh, chain those two right so you have param and param and so on and so forth so what this tells me is that i can come here and say param and send another param right uh i can do that right uh, the end is would be the synthetic sugar, so it's more uh, readable. Right? I also can use params, which is very similar, but params uh, enables me to send everything in the uh, as a parameter to the params. So I can say username John token one two three four, and it will be sent as a like this uh and then you don't have to be chaining uh those right so that's uh params so since i'm only using param uh, only one param it makes sense for me to use param right? so let's start with going to lombok right now right so lombok make z make it easier for you to uh have uh boilerplate code in Java because there are a lot of uh, patterns that you need to follow on Java, the Java way of coding that Lombok removes it, right? IntelliJ helps a lot, but Lombok removes, literally. So the first thing we need to do is install Lombok, right? So let me go here to, uh, again, Gradle Lombok. We're going to be finding here. There are two ways, right? This is the new way using Gradle plugins. Uh, and this is what we need. If we go to, to build Gradle, we have the plugins here. I don't need the application, it's still here. I'm just going to remove it here. Right? And I need to make sure that he was able to download uh, you was able to download, so I don't see it yet. So ask me to refresh. I can click here and refresh the local changes. So see, now I, I also have a long box. Uh, let me get out of the presentation mode. You also can come here on Gradle. So see, you can come here on Gradle and you can refresh here, right? So let me come back on presentation mode. Uh, now that I see that's there, then I have already Lombok on my libraries, right? But my library is going to be, it's going to be for my code itself, right? I also need to tell IntelliJ that it needs to be able to interpret Lombok. Otherwise I cannot code IntelliJ. I cannot run my tests. It's not going to be able to compile the code, right? So what I first need to do, I already installed, but I, I need to show you. What I first need to do is I need to go to my plugins. 
uh, I'm going to go to marketplace and I'm going to look for Lombok. I have already installed, you're going to install, it's going to ask for you to restart in the IntelliJ, you're going to restart the IntelliJ and once you start IntelliJ, you go back to preferences. And once you go back to preferences, you need to set two things. You need to enable the Lombok plugin, right? Uh, you're going to be, you're going to find uh, the Lombok plugin here. If you can't find it, just type Lombok, sorry, Lombok here, and it's going to find the plugin. And this needs to be enabled. This upper part here, enable Lombok plugin for this project, it needs to be enabled. It also gives you a hint don't forget to enable annotation processing under compile settings for Lombok, right? So this is uh, enable Lombok. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to type annotation and I need to enable here as well, enable annotate, annotation processing, right? Because Lombok uses, uh, uses annotation. So we need to tell uh, IntelliJ also that it needs to be looking for those. Right, so I enable Lombok, I install Lombok, I enable Lombok, and I enable annotation. Three things. Great. If you have all of that, you are set. So the first thing uh, that I'm going to show you is how incredible Lombok is. Right. So we have our test. This is uh, all the tests that we have. I'm going to run all my tests. Remember, Control Shift R is going to run all my tests. And I have all my tests running there. Great, that's excellent. So what I can do is I can remove the majority of this code. Right, so I'm going to do piece by piece so you can uh, understand what Lombok is doing. Right. So let me open all my code. So this is my get, right? Uh, uh, everything that we have here, my getters and my setters. So I'm going to remove all my gets. Right, I'm going to run the test. Of course, it's going to fail. It's not even compiling, right? It, it cannot find getters, the gets anymore. So I'm going to come here to my class, right? It needs to be on my class. And I'm going to enable getter, uh, at getter. And I choose the Lombok getter. Awesome. So I'm going to rerun my tests. And it passed. What is the magic, right? So IntelliJ, e either if I hold Control or Command and click it, it's going to, to take me to the documentation. Or if I just leave my cursor there, it's going to show me a little bit about it, right? So you can basically see that the get is basically creating uh, creating the get that we had, right? So uh, if the attributes called foo, the getter would be exactly this, right? I also can create the getter for specific properties if I if I don't want to to create for everything. I can come right here and just say getter or setter, and that's going to be for that properties. See some putting on a class. All of the properties on that class now have a getter. That's amazing, right? So now I'm going to, oh, I forgot about this one. So let me rerun it. Awesome, that's great. So now let's remove the set. Set mail and set less than mail. I'm going to rerun again. So I, I, uh, I use the shortcut Control R to rerun everything. Uh, so it failed again, right? Because we don't have setters. So just to show you, if I do setter here and rerun it, it passed, right? It, it's not using the last name, right? It's not using any of those setters. If I put only on the job, then it failed because it's expecting set email. Right, so I don't, but I don't want to do uh, uh, attribute by attribute. I would like to have on a class level. So I'm going to pull here. 
Remember that the JSON ignore is a property on Jackson. This is a Jackson property. Get and share is a long box. JSON alias also are Jacksons. Awesome. So now we have, we don't have any getters and any setters anymore. That's amazing. So now let's remove the constructor. I rerun it and it also cannot compile because we are using the constructor too, right? So I can put another um, annotation called all args constructor. So it's going to create a constructor with every argument that we have here. It's even going to be more complex or, or more, uh, uh, it's going to be even more uh, complete than the other one because the other one we only had name, uh, job, and email. This one we, st we already have less names. So I'm going to rerun it now. Uh, it still failed, right? And why it failed? Because the test is not using the last name. So I'm just going to do a quick fix here. IntelliJ is helping me know what, what is what what I need to pass, right? Name, job, email. And if I hit Command P or Control P, it's also going to tell me. So this is just my last name, Lima. Rerun again. And it passed. Right? So let me rerun everything because I only ran that test. It ran everything. That's great. So now I still have a, a default constructor, right? If I remove it and rerun it, it failed again because we are also using a default constructor, right? And if I remove this constructor, Java, by default, if I don't have any constructor set, by default, it's going to use a, uh, a vanilla one, which is this one, which is a plain old constructor. But when I set one of the constructor, I need to specify that I also want a no args constructor. Now I can run it, right? That's amazing, right? Um, Lombok also has a an, another notation called data that I can remove the getter and the setter data. So if I take an, a sneak peek here, it tells uh, generate get for all fields useful to string method equivalent to uh, annotations of getter setter require args constructor to string and uh, equals and hash code. So it has even more stuff. So if I run everything, I have everything that I needed, right? Remember that I cannot remove this. So if I remove this, it's not going to be able to uh, to get the fields, uh, the unknown fields, right? So I need this as well. So let me remove everything that I don't need related to imports. It was control option O. And now this is amazing. Of course, I still need this because name, the name is using on the getter and the alias is being used on the setter. The same thing here, right? So I need this to tell Lombok uh, that it has a different uh, usage. Let's take a sneak peek of the difference that it was. You're going to be amazed. So I'm going to go to VCS version control, git, and I'm going to go to compare with, and I'm going to compare to this one, right? Which is my last commit with the one that I have. Look, let me increase here. Look at the difference, right? On the left is what I what we had, and on the right is the new code. Look at the difference, right? Uh, the amount of lines, it was doubled more than doubled, 48 lines, 40, 47 lines, and now I have 22. And look at the code, right? These, and if you look at the code, there is no logic here. This is just Pojo, what it's called Pojo, right? Plain old Java class, plain, sorry, plain old Java object. This is just a, a recipe to create a, a domain class on Java, right? And we don't need that, 
right? In the, as I showed you, IntelliJ help you build it, but then it's very polluted. I don't need it. Then I, I, I was able to remove all of these with just Lombok, right? So this is amazing. This is, but and I didn't want to show you why, Rafael, did you went through the process of creating all of these? Because Lombok, you could see that Lombok has a lot of magic happening, right? And I didn't want you to, uh, I want you to understand or to have understood uh, the process, what it was actually needed. Because if you did not have the basics here of the getters and setters and constructors, then uh, it would be, could be harder for you to understand when with long walk. And I don't want you to be the kind of coder that only knows how to code for a specific, uh, using a specific framework. You should be able to code without long walk. It's going to require more typing, yes but you should. You should be able to code without IntelliJ. IntelliJ is, helps you your life uh, tremendously. Yes, it does. But you should be able to uh, understand what's happening without IntelliJ. So, um, cool. So there is one thing that I don't like about this approach. So let me rerun everything because I want to have a passing test. So let's uh, do a commit, right? So let's see what we have here. Uh, I have a new file here called Lombok. So let's take a sneak peek of that file. It's just, it was generated by the Gradle plugin. Um, I'm, I'm just going to push it. So let me do git add dash p Lombok and remove application. Yes, everything related to Lombok. We removed what we didn't need. Uh, we had to do some refactoring. And we need to add the Lombok config, git add dot is not, and it's there. Git commit dash m. Um, insert Lombok dependencies and update code to use it. Great. So now, uh, one of the things that I did I don't like is a specific test that we did, right? So if we go to the create user and we look at this test here, the one that we had to update uh, the constructor, uh, I don't like this test because uh, if we make it fail, I can show you. Control Shift R to execute the test that is on my cursor. You can see that now it's saying the even more stuff, right? If we remember for this test, uh, let me go to my base and open here. For this test, it's to create a user. I only send, I only need to send the create and the name and the job, right? If you look here, what's happening, I'm sending too many things, right? It could, this could be fine if this is what you want to test. Uh, the API could ignore those, right? If they are using a the Lombok or whatever uh, uh, framework they're using, they could be ignoring something that they don't know and you'd ignore this, but it, it, they could also reject. They could say, uh, we don't recognize some of the fields unable to parse or whatever. Uh, so you should be able to work with this, right? So. Uh, Jackson, you could you could ignore some of these properties with Jackson, but then you you can be in a state where some of your tests needs this, some of your tests don't need it. Uh, you maybe you want to test if your API rejects unknown fields, you want to test that. But if your API uh, accepts that, right, you might also want to test that, right. So. You, you might have different tests that you want to do, right? If your API rejects, then uh, you can have a failure test uh, or an unsuccessful test checking this, and you can have a happy pass test, uh, but then you would only have to send those two. So you need to have flexibility of having th those two approaches, right? So uh, how can we improve this, right? It's not good to go back to the domain and start doing a bunch of JSON ignore. We have we have JSON ignore here. We have JSON ignore. 
property, JSON in R, JSON Pro. We have a bunch of properties that you can uh, go into the JSON documentation and, and understand what each and every one of those does. But then you don't want your code to have uh, hidden stuff, right? Then you, your test is going to work in one way, the other test is going to work another way. Your test should be clean and readable. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to remove this user and I'm going to use a hash map, right? So I'm going to do a map and it's key value, right? So you see that's key value there. Uh, and this is the syntax. I do string, which is my key, and the string, which is my value. I give it a name and I instantiate it using new hash map. There you go. So, so think about hash map uh, as an array that you can give it a name to the index. So an array is like zero and it's my name, Rafael. It would be like this. And the next one would be one and would be my job, for instance, uh, engineer test, right? So an array goes through the index. A hash map, you can give it a name to this. So I can actually call this name and I can call this job. And now I can access it without going through the index. I can actually look for the name. It's a dictionary, right? So that's why I call my map. So I, now I have say user.put to insert a key and a value name, Rafael. And the second one is job engineer test, right? And if I wanted to retrieve one of the values, I could do user.get and I would say job and it's going to get a job, right? It's going to get that job, which, which would be the value test. So this is because I, I set the key to be string. I could set the string to be, the, the, string, uh, the key to be an integer or whatever, right? Whatever I want. So now I can rerun this. It's still going to fail because we are forcing it to fail. And now you can see that it's only sending the actual value. It knows it needs to create a JSON body from this because of our base test request specification. So I don't have to do anything else. Just give it the hash map that I that I that I want. So let's make everything work. So let's fix the assertion and there you go. That's great. It's working now. If you find yourself using a lot of hash maps, you can actually put these you can create a method uh, here as a, as a support method. You can put in your domain, whatever makes sense for you, right? So I'm going to leave it like this. Uh, we have everything working. So let's do a commit. I can do git, what did we do? Git add dash p. We update our test. Great, so git commit dash m. Uh, modify create user test to use hash map. I, I forgot it wrong. Dig it that, that dash amend so I can make it a quick fix. Awesome. And now I can create my branch. So git checkout dash p English. I think we are in the seventh. Uh, dash Lombok and hash map. Git branch, just yes, we are on the run. Git push origin and my branch name. That's great. That's what I want to show you, folks. Thank you for watching this far. Thank you for keeping it up. With all uh, the videos, I would love to have your comments. Uh, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. And I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.